like I'm not an anarchist. I believe in order. Okay. I believe in centralized control. I believe in order. I believe that it's, uh, I, I 100% agree with Zizek on his interpretation of anarchy and anarchism in general. Like I do not want direct democracy at every stage, at every step. That is not a life worth living. Hey, chat. You know, take care of that stuff. It's just, I don't want to take care of it. Also, I take showers every morning. Or, this is a different type of enemy than we're used to. What the fuck? We're adjusting our- Is there gonna be, what, this is why the Guantanamo Bay is still in operation, or is still open, but are there, is there TOS in this? I feel like there might be TOS in this. Boys, we got TOS in this or what? It's okay to not be an anarchist, but your understanding of it is genuinely dog shit. Oh my God. <sighs> okay, bro. Thinking to the new type of enemy. Days after the 9-11 attacks, President George W. Bush launched the global war on terror. In October 2001, he sent the military to invade Afghanistan and hunt down members of Al-Qaeda and its ally, the Taliban. It also offered cash rewards to anyone who would help capture a terrorist, often enough money to change lives. So many in Afghanistan and Pakistan took advantage of this offer and turned hundreds of men over, often with little evidence. Norway has only started pumping oil in the 90s. They were a developed nation already. It's apples to preserve fish. Okay, but like, but why? What do you think it's like when it's not a fully developed nation? When it's a nation that suffered from the devastating impact of colonialism? Or when it's a nation that has uh, been, been uh, left behind? That like the only way to uplift nations like that is by giving Western governments or Western corporations the entirety of the profits of their own natural resources like that's so stupid that's your best counter dude what the f there's a chatter saying this video is bad stuff yeah i know norway was pretty shit compared to the rest of europe before the oil pumps open up meaning that norway had investment money and a stronger negotiation hand dude the strongest negotiation hand for norway was being a european country that was not going to get uh, a, a being a european country being uh being a country that was going to make it very hard for uh, I don't know, Western forces to invade and, and uh, justify destroying and, and subjugating in the same way that it is for Iran or Venezuela or numerous other countries that we do this to. Also, it's pretty funny when people say like Norway was developed in comparison to Africa. Yeah, as the Darshan points out, why do they think Africa is underdeveloped? Because we literally do not own our resources and can't afford to build infrastructure. My mom wants me to thank you for stepping up and showing her a wonderful time last night. Do you agree with the Twitter folks saying the modern Twitter left would have gone along with the Iraq invasion wholeheartedly? I don't know, and I don't care. I literally am the modern Twitter left, and I was not a supporter of the Iraq war, so I don't... No, just, I, this is the dumb question. I hate, like, I hate Twitter. I hate leftists on Twitter, okay? Who cares? The U.S. then sent those men to secret prisons called Black Sites, where they interrogated and tortured them. But within a month, they started searching for a larger, permanent prison to consolidate all these prisoners eventually settling on this old Navy base in Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. In January 2002, the first- <laughs> Motherf***** live in a settler colonial nation and ask why the Global South is underdeveloped? I mean, dude, here, the, we're literally watching a video that perfectly explains that, okay? You're watching a video where America was like, we need a place that where we can deny the routine uh, like human rights that we afford every single human being on our soil within our court system. And, and, and so they decided to literally build it in a Cuba, okay? A, a, a foreign adversary to the United States. They're like, oh yeah, we'll just build it here in another country, okay? We'll just buy the land and we'll build it. We'll build the prison in another country with the express purpose of being able to violate human rights. So we can torture mother. Okay. Technically not on American soil, you know? Thank you for keeping my dog company while well, I- Well, buy the land. Stole the land. Not buy the land. Insane. Sorry. First detainees began arriving. One of them was Moath Al Alawi, who spent the next two decades in this prison because the US government deemed him too dangerous to be set free. But they never charged him with a crime. Crazy. And he's not alone. Insane. Hundreds of men were imprisoned in Guantanamo. Few were charged with a crime, some were tortured, and none received a fair trial. It's a prison that's operated outside the bounds of law. So how did the U.S. get away with this? 
And why is Guantanamo Bay still open? I mean, here, great, great answer. Let me answer you. Because we're the bad guys, okay? We're the baddies. Because we're the baddies. No one else. We are the baddies. We're the biggest baddies. There are other baddies out there, but no one is as bad as we are. And that's why we can get away with it. Who's going to stop us, bro? Who's going to stop us, dude? The goat herders family? Like, is that who? Like, we literally lied and said the reason why we had to do all this is because they were, you know, a threat to our freedom and our security, okay? If you can get the people in America to believe that, you can get them to believe anything, okay? Can you imagine? Yeah, we had the fuck, bro, we had to round these motherfuckers up dude has like they are genuine danger to our well-being you know and safety there are two myths about the people who were picked up one is that they are all hardened capable terrorists the other is that they were all innocent shepherds this is dan freed he worked in the U.S. Foreign Service for over 40 years and was assigned to Guantanamo in 2009. The conclusion I had is there was kind of a bell curve. At one low end, there were actually hardened terrorists. Like this man, Osama bin Laden's personal secretary. There were others that were sometimes petty criminals and drug dealers, not great people, but not criminal masterminds, not terrorists. And the, the top of the bell curve were people just a little more involved than what I just described. At the other end were people who were swept up and shouldn't have been there at all. Like a group of Uyghur men, members of a mainly Muslim ethnic group who were fleeing persecution in China. And they wound up in outside <laughs> camps and we didn't know what to do with them. And so they ended up in Guantanamo. In fact, many detainees were put in Guantanamo based on little evidence. Yet Bush officials often described them all as terrorists. I mean, these are people that would gnaw through hydraulic lines in the back of a C-17. For the record, okay, none of those people should have been there. That should not have existed, okay? If we are the civilized world police that we claim we are, which we're not, holy shit, how much more proof do you need? This would not happen. There is no need for this to happen, okay? These are not people that, I mean, none of this is, is appropriate, okay? None of this, none of this, none of this. Team, what uh, about the Uyghurs, by the way? Of course we put Uyghurs in Gitmo, dude. Uyghurs, okay. I, I am not the Chinese State Department, but part of the reason, uh, I mean, I've talked about this before. G okay, Xi Jinping literally said the Uyghur separatist Muslim uh, people that they were, uh, they had to surveil and they had to put in jail and they had to put in re-education camps okay like they had to do that because they learned that from america okay they learned that from america on a, uh, on like america's terror programs is what they what they got it from uh a lot of those uyghurs by the way which is ironic because you know there's a hell of people in here that are like oh dude you bullshit a lot of those uyghur uh guys that work with the turkish government they are literally trained by the turkish government okay the uh, the East Turkestan uh, people uh, that go and like fight in Syria and go and fight all over the Middle East. Like those guys are trained in some circumstances by the American government. They're trained in some circumstances by the Turkish government. They're trained some, in some circumstances by the Chinese government too, or originally sent by the Chinese government. And then they come back and they're like, we want this territory. Okay. We want it. We want it back. We had it a long time ago. It belongs to us. We want it back. Are you implying that there's nuance? There's always nuance in this sort of shit. Okay. Months, baby, let's go. Hassle. However, having said that, it is still unjustifiable what the Chinese state did for the Uyghurs. You guys know what my take is on this. Okay. But at this stage, they won. It's, it's GG's. You know what I mean? You can get mad and say, no, there's ongoing genocide or whatever you want to say. But ultimately, the Chinese government, the Chinese state 1000% won. Even the Associated Press was like, yeah, the camps are closed now. More so. Rot, less good. You know, you can, you can complain about it more the, as much as you want, but they were able to, through a sequence of mass surveillance and also re-education camps, completely wipe out the people that wanted to have a free, autonomous East Turkestan that, uh, that would be, you know, Muslim in the way that, or Uyghur and Muslim in the way that they wanted it to be. All right, let's continue. Uh, to bring it down, very, very dangerous people. By 2003, there are nearly 700 Guantanamo detainees, and virtually none of them were charged with a crime. The American flag flies again over our embassy in Kabul. Terrorists who once occupied Afghanistan now occupy cells at Guantanamo Bay. 
The Bush administration chose Guantanamo Bay largely because of its unique location. It was under U.S. control, but it wasn't technically inside the U.S. So they claimed U.S. law wouldn't apply to the detainees held here. Hell yeah, brother! If they put them in a U.S. prison, they'd have to either charge them with a crime and put them on trial, or release them. In other words, under U.S. law, prisoners would have ways to get out. For bad reasons, they didn't trust the criminal justice system. It gives too many rights to prisoners. There was a sense that the old rules had to be thrown out. The U.S. also claimed that international law didn't apply to these detainees either. Even though 196 countries, including the U.S., signed the Geneva Conventions, a set of laws protecting prisoners of war. But for those laws to apply, the U.S. would have to define the detainees as prisoners of war. Then they couldn't interrogate them and would have to release them as soon as the conflict ends. We didn't By the way, imagine thinking like, so <laughs> the American criminal justice system and the American prison system is one of the worst on the planet. Okay, straight up. Like, I'm sorry if you don't understand how bad it is, but quite literally, one of the absolute worst most cruel and inhumane uh, prisons uh, on prison systems on the planet. Okay, it's not a hot take. This is an ice cold take. So for the American government to say that prison system where we like legally torture people that like a country like Norway, for example, considers to be un inhumane to uh, extradite prisoners to because of the subjugation uh, that prisoners are are uh, uh, placed upon or that uh, prisoners are put under rather. That was actually too nice for what we wanted to do. We have the slavery and torture prisons in America, and that's too nice because there's habeas corpus and you have to like, uh, you know, there's like certain, unfortunately, certain civil liberties that you have to give to these people that you do not consider to be human once they're in prison. But even that system is too nice. Not enough. That's why we got to go to the Cuba. Technically not America. Awesome. Greatest country, dude. So magnanimous. So good want to give them those rights because we were so fearful of a new terrorist attack we wanted to interrogate and frankly some parts of the u.s government interrogated through torture frankly what do you mean dog we already torture people in prison like in normal prison people get tortured like all the time it's called solitary confinement so the the american prison system is just like torture is a part of the process you have to torture like part of the fun okay um and also torture itself is is led to zero work workable intelligence because people just lied when they're under torture. So there's that part of it too. This is like, a, you know, this is something that we found out the hard way, or I guess the easy way, depending on how little you give a shit about torturing people. Uh, and yet, you know, it's still something that we, uh, that we push for, which is very cool. I mean, that fact. So instead of charging them as criminals or calling them prisoners of war, the U.S. made up a new term, unlawful enemy combatants. The U.S. claimed it could hold unlawful enemy combatants without charges in Guantanamo indefinitely, and the detainees couldn't challenge it in court. But the U.S. could prosecute them in a new court system run entirely by the military. These courts were designed to be complex, with rules that heavily favored the U.S. government. For example, the government could introduce evidence without showing it to the detainee first. This made Guantanamo Bay Prison a legal black hole. The original sin is that we created an institution outside and designed to be outside the rule of law. No more torture in our name. And shut it down and release everybody. Justice for Guantanamo detainees, now a cause celebre among human rights activists. World leaders, allied governments, and U.S. politicians began calling for the closure of Guantanamo. Plus, Bush officials recognized that it was actually hurting the war on terror. Gitmo was also a great recruiting tool. There were all these terrorist videos about how evil the Americans were and we have to fight back because they imprison people without um, any legal basis, they torture people. Eventually, the Supreme Court stepped in. In a series of decisions, the court ruled that Guantanamo detainees were entitled to challenge their imprisonment in court. It was clear the U.S. would soon have to let many of these detainees out. So the Bush administration reviewed every case and set up a transfer process. Pretty simple process, yeah. Move them back, mainly to Afghanistan. Nobody asked a lot of questions. Over a five-year period, the Bush administration transferred 532 detainees and only convicted three through the military courts. Five detainees died in the prison. Four of them were reportedly suicides. That left 242 in Guantanamo when he left office, with some hope that the prison would close. Guantanamo. 
why though why i don't understand what is the benefit how do they profit what could you what could they use possibly gain from this I mean, not everything is directly for profit immediately. I mean, the profit comes from the never-ending cycle of our uh, gross inflated military industrial complex lobbying the government to go into wars, and then they, the government needs to use their weapons, and then they continue doing that. But this part of it, the Guantanamo Bay part of it, is just basically, you know, we got to store the people that we have made out to be the big, big, big bad baddies, some of which are big baddies, uh, in a place where it's just uh, unjustifiable and, and where we can torture them um it's just it, that that part is just cruelty like for the sake of cruelty that part isn't like directly to make money the money part of it is on the other side the money part of it is when you're going to war and you're doing the wars in afghanistan and you're doing the wars in uh in in uh in iraq and many other places it's also to make sure they never go to trial yeah i mean that too yeah we catch him, we can't, we don't want to put him in trial. You can't do that. Well, will be closed uh, no later than one year from now. On his second day in office, Barack Obama signed an executive order to close Guantanamo within a year. His administration split the detainees into three groups. Good deterrent too? No, it's not a good deterrent. What the f*** are you stupid? It's, they literally in the video said it's not a deterrent. It was a recruitment tool for terrorists. To be like you don't want to go to guantanamo baby they'll put you in guantanamo and they also put a lot of innocent people there that's the point there's no deterrent what are they deterring you from being muslim dude like hey i know you were just like a regular dude and your uncle's cousin is like uh i don't know related to the wife of the person who is uh working at the house of some terrorist dude in afghanistan you live in dearborn but guess what you're going to permanent jail now you're going to perma jail Oh, did you go to a, uh, did you go to a mosque in Florida? And it turns out one of the dudes in that mosque in Florida had given to charity causes that turned out to be like not an Islamic charity that was good, but it was deemed bad. Guess what? You're going to perma jail too now. Literally can't fight back. You can't do anything. But you can't even do anything about it. You're just in perma jail. You're being tortured now. Okay. Happy to be and laid out a plan with more pads right out. Job. Man. The first group included about half the detainees who would be transferred either to their home countries or for those whose home countries were too dangerous or unstable, the U.S. would negotiate deals with other countries to take them. Or they'd be released to the U.S. This was the plan for the Uyghur men. A second group months and chat still hasn't unionized. It's kind of scary how Westerners do not view these people are, as real human beings. They just make excuses like, do they not have families, children, dreams? Like, what the fuck? No, no, they don't. Because at the heart of this is a fascist point of view. Like, wait, what? Hassan exaggerating? Is that what you said? Hassan is exaggerating if you guys did not know. You think I'm exaggerating? Both of those cases that I mentioned are literal ex actual examples. Both the mosque one and the other one. They're both real examples. I can't remember the name of the dude. One of them is still in prison. He only recently got out because of COVID. The f*** are you talking about? Exaggerating. I know it seems ex like an exaggeration because it's so f unjustifiable but that's not true it's not an exaggeration would be tried as criminals in a u.s federal court including five men who helped plan the 9-11 attacks but that still left a third group there was a category of people we didn't feel comfortable transferring but without sufficient evidentiary basis to put them on trial this final group of several dozen would be moved to a super maximum security prison in illinois then guantanamo could be closed it was a good enough plan it had risk, but keeping Guantanamo open has risks too. Now, I believe that any plan to close Guantanamo that includes bringing these terrorists into the United States, Mr. President, is a mistake. To do so what are they going to do, bro? What are they going to do? You've been torturing them for like 20 years straight. What are they going to do? Are they going to do a terror? Are they going to do the terrorism inside of an American prison? Like, that's the shit that blows my mind, dude. They sent a literal high school from Michigan to Guantanamo Bay. Like, it's just insane. It, it, it's insane. Like, what, what are they? It's like when you ask people, like, why prisoners should never be able to vote, right? Like, what are they going to do? Vote for crime to be legal? Is that what you think is going to happen? Jesus Christ. So it would be nothing short of an invitation for Al-Qaeda to operate inside our home. Bro, this man's name is Saxby Chambliss, okay? Are you kidding me? Disqualifying, okay? Sorry. Disqualifying! If your name is Saxby, you shouldn't be in the Senate! What the f Saxby Chambliss? Are you joking, dude? Why can't you have a normal name like Harris or Jonathan? What the f 
Is sex be shameless? Conservatives would be like, God damn, these libtards are naming their children blue and then turn around and name their child sex be Jebediah shameless after some slave owner, okay? Do so would be nothing short of an invitation for Al Qaeda to operate inside our homeland. In my view, these men are exactly where they belong. In Congress, Republican politicians fiercely opposed every aspect of the plan. They pushed back against transfers and putting any detainees on trial in the U.S. It will make America a more dangerous place, and it will allow... By the way, same, same dickheads, like, still around, for the record. Like, none of them... It's so, it's so shitty that, like, so many old people died over the course of the past two years, okay, from COVID. Like, why couldn't they be in a New York uh, nursing home? Seriously. ...platform to spew their hateful ideology. They even attacked the plan to move some into the Supermax prison. You're also putting people who would then start plotting for their escape from the outside in America's neighborhoods. But all of a sudden when Obama comes in, oh no, you can't let people go because you're letting terrorists out. And by the spring of 09, this narrative was already set. Obama administration, soft on terrorism. It's fair to ask tough questions. What's not reasonable is making it impossible for Obama when you didn't ask any hard questions about Bush. Ultimately, both Republicans and Democrats passed bills that blocked any Guantanamo detainee from coming to the U.S. for any reason, including for trial, imprisonment, or release. Then the Obama administration folded. They gave up at the first sign that it would take a lot of political capital to close Gitmo. But y'all made a big deal of it. So you better mean it. The Obama administration didn't mean it enough. The only two options detainees had stayed in place but got much harder. The military courts were extremely slow and ineffective. I have to pee, I'll be back. Three convictions had been overturned by 2016, and transfers became more complicated. Many of the detainees were from Yemen, but couldn't be transferred back after conflict broke out there in 2011. So the U.S. would have to convince other countries to take them. That was Dan's job. For years and years, the American government has said, these are the worst of the worst. These are terrorist masterminds. And now I'm saying, no, no, they're actually not. We shouldn't have asked other countries to take them if we weren't willing to take them. Dan negotiated transfers for 17 Uyghur men who were not allowed to be released to the US. They'd been held in Guantanamo for more than a decade. Over eight years, the Obama administration moved 197 detainees out of Guantanamo and convicted five through the military courts. Four more died inside, three reportedly from suicide. That left 41 detainees with a new president who wanted to keep the prison open. We're going to keep, as you know, Gitmo, we're keeping that open, and we're going to load it up with bad dudes. In 2017, Donald Trump took office as a fervent supporter of keeping Guantanamo open. In four years, his administration only transferred out one detainee. In 2021, when President Biden took office, Moeth al Alawi had been in Guantanamo for 19 years. According to his testimony, he went on a series of hunger strikes to protest his detention and described his life as an endless horror movie. But on January 11th, 2022, Biden approved Alawi and four others for transfer. For Guantanamo to close, the Biden administration needs to transfer the last remaining detainees. And the military courts need to conclude trials for the 10 who are currently stuck in the system including the five alleged 9-11 plotters who have been on trial for a decade. This is why I laugh whenever anyone tries to say like, this is exactly, this is exactly why like, you know, January 6th uh, commission is the same as what we're doing to the Muslims. Like, dude, you will never do that to white people. Like America is a white supremacist country. This is the product of a white supremacist ideology, okay? That is at the very core, the very foundation of this country's inception. So that will never happen to the whites, let alone the white supremacists, okay? Like, there will never be a concentration camp for white supremacists. There should. It'd be sick if there was, like, re-education camp. But there will never be one, okay? But you can't just close down the facility now. Like, obviously, it'd be better. Yeah, shut the fuck up. Picture of Senator Zaxby carrying onions into the Capitol building. Vidalia, sweet onions. Look at my mother. He's like, look at his, look at his pants, dude. Ah, he's making me so mad. He's making me so Once mad. Once you start them outside the rule of law, bringing them- Vidalia! The I'm from Georgia! Rule of law is a lot trickier than you think. Don't throw out the rule book in a fit of passion. You'll regret it. We did. Maybe don't call it concentration camps, though. No, I said re-education camps. Re 
work facility. Yeah, do what, what China does. Just say it's a work camp, dude. Trade school slash work camp. You know, America needs to start treating. <laughs> America start, needs to start treating white supremacists like uh, Uyghur separatists. Okay, it'll never happen, but it'd be a lot cooler if it did. Here's a video of Operation Flex where the FBI spied on young Muslim men trying to tie them to extremist groups. Yeah, we're not going to do that, but terrible human being, but Hasi is most mad about his name and his pants. I mean, I just, I can't. It's giving me an aneurysm, dude. Looking at this man in all of his might, in all of his glory, okay? A man who has the name Saxby Chambliss. It's just like, it makes me so mad. Look at him. Just look. How does this not anger you? Like, this guy, he was running the country for a while, you know? He was a senator. Fuck. How did the U.S. end up with nurses wearing garbage bags? The Silicon Valley CEO, Jared Kushner, and the race or the PPP to get America's hospitals. Uh, hello, I wrote about the extremely dystopian vibes inside the bubble at the Beijing Olympics. Exhibit A, hotel bartenders making special cocktails in their full PPE gear. This is so funny. People are in, uh, people are at the Olympics, right? Or people who had the privilege to be able to cover it. Uh, and like... <laughs> They're all- they're complaining about how fucking dystopian it is. I saw him with Pokey's hair. No, it looks cool. <laughs> it was- I'm cool. telling you, it's- it- I mean, maybe not that shape, you know? You could add some depth. You I literally- more volume I look that. like I'm calling every manager. <laughs> like, there is not a manager- There's not a manager in California I will not call with this hair. <laughs> hey, if you like this video, please subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. <laughs>